love that spot hello wonderland kelly here got a few hours to kill in the richmond area today so i've come to the james river parks um, at the 22nd street entrance i'm going to go over to bell isle and try to do some macro today Let's see how this goes <laughs> Buttermilk Trail. Through the tunnel. The mighty James River. Got some rain yesterday, so it's flowing pretty good. This should be fun already spotted something fun down here in this tree a nice little black rat snake so got a little garter snake down here this might end up being more of a snaky day good stuff so far <laughs> river is flowing well over here is the abandoned Bell Isle power plant. I forget exactly when it was built. I'll look it up, but uh, yeah, you used to be able to go in there. They have since blocked it off pretty well, at least the last time I was here. Some enterprising soul has probably figured out how to get back in. <laughs> See a lot of the uh, window bars are cut or have holes in them at any rate. All right. So I'm on the bridge, walking over to Belle Isle. Then we'll get it rolling. <laughs> All right. So Belle Isle, as the name implies, is an island, a pretty large island, sits in the middle of the James River, close to one side, actually. Um, but yeah, these days it's a park, the whole island, so it's crisscrossed with trails and it's pretty. Belle Isle. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, it has a history of going back pretty far, of uh, manufacturing. So the ruins that you see behind me here were a uh, metalworking facility, factory. Um, yeah, in the early 1800s, basically, they made nails and horseshoes, and that kind of thing, with slave labor, of course, <laughs> this being the South. Um, probably the most famous thing in Belle Isle's history is that it was a Union prisoner of uh, Confederate prisoner of war camp for Union soldiers that were captured during the Civil War. Not uh, great conditions out here. They basically had tents rather than any facilities to house the prisoners. Um, so yeah, that was a little rough. But yeah, after the war, it became a park, and it's a nice park. So the idea today is to roam around. I've brought. Uh, some macro oriented photo gear. Now that spring is upon us, I hope to find some interesting subjects to get close up and really close up shots of. Those snakes I saw were pretty cool. Um, didn't have the right lens attached to get real close to those and I didn't want to swap while I was walking. So the perils of hiking with a backpack that you don't really want to take off your back until you're ready. Um, so yeah, I'm looking around here. I'm seeing some, some uh, little strawberry plants, which is cool. And hopefully some other stuff. Hoping to find some bugs and whatnot. Because that's always fun. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Start here. And then we'll look around. See what we can find. So down here is what I'm talking about. If this camera can get in there close enough, hopefully. This is mock or false strawberry. So, looks a lot like strawberry. Um, might be edible. I'm not sure. But, uh. Yeah, there's a few of them around here that I'm seeing, so it might be neat to try to get close up on that. Let's see if we can do it. So gear-wise, here's what we're working with today. Got my tripod, shooting the R5. I think I want the higher megapixels rather than the reach of the 1.6 today. I will flip my screen around so I can use that as a focusing aid. Um, I've got mounted right now the 
RF 100 millimeter macro, which is excellent. It's, uh, I loved the EF version of that lens. And this one goes all the way, um, instead of just one to one macro, it goes to one to four, or one to 1.4, sorry. Um, so a little bit larger than life size on the sensor, which is nice. Uh, I've got a macro focusing rail, something I picked up on Amazon, I'm sure. Um, aluminum construction, it's pretty solid. The only weird thing about it to me is that uh, it's got an Arca Swiss plate here. This is the iShoot uh, model of you know, macro focusing rail, which is, it's okay. It's one of those Chinese knockoffs. But anyway, um, the Arca Swiss rail mounts, the long way goes perpendicular to the direction of travel of your screw here, which seems weird because most lenses, if they have uh, like a, a tripod collar like I have on here, that goes in the direction of the lens. So if I mount the camera this way, then I'm traveling side to side when I screw this. So that's a little weird. Um, I have an extra Arca Swiss plate that I can mount to the collar sideways uh, so I can mount it properly. But right now I'm just using my little uh, Peak Design holder because this lens and camera combo isn't that heavy. So I don't feel like I need to use the collar right now. And that should give me a little more uh, extension out front. Um, got it mounted on a little ball head here so I can swivel pretty well. Tripod displays out flat if I want it to. I've got it kind of at the level above that. We'll see if that works or if I need to go flat. Um, and then for lighting, in case I need extra light, which I probably will, I've got my little panel, uh, which is handy. Very nice. And I've also got something that I really haven't used before, even though I've had it for a while. Just fell off the top of my bag. Uh, this guy. So, pretty cheap Amazon ring light LED. Um, it's got a little control box, so a little bit adjustable in terms of intensity. Not a real big uh, swing in that. But yeah, in case I need that, that can mount to the front of the lens. Bada boom. And we'll see how that works. Yeah. So the name of the game today is trying some toys. Taking some shots. It's just sunny here. <laughs> okay, let's give these strawberries a try. Here we go. Okay, so I've got it splayed out pretty far. Not quite flat. Um, but there's my target down there. And here's what I'm seeing on the back. Hopefully this will be visible enough. So um, with macro, I try to use manual focus as much as possible um, just because you can dial it in a lot better and you don't want focus changing I've also got focus peaking on which hopefully you can see that little shading which I've got it set to red <laughs> which isn't great for the current target um, but you can see that moving across the surface of the berry as I turn the focusing ring a little bit but that's looking pretty good so I think what I'm gonna do I'll take a few normal, um, but I also want to do some focus stacking today. So I'm going to try to take some some stacks of exposures at slightly different focus points as I go. And that's really what the tripod is for, to enable me to, to stay static while I'm doing that. Um, oh, I should have mentioned also, I brought a wireless remote because when you're shooting like this, camera shake is your enemy. So. Um, using like two second timer is good if you're actually using the shutter button to let the vibrations die down or you can use a remote um, so I might do that and actually I will do that and I'll show you the setup for that real quick too so stay tuned hold on all right so this is the remote I have it's the AOD LAN BRE1A which is a ripoff of uh, Canon's BR1 I believe um, it's a Bluetooth remote and it's, all it's really got is your shutter button, which does do, um, no, it doesn't do half press. You got your shutter button, you got an AF button, so a focusing button if you do wanna focus with the remote. And then wide and telephoto buttons, which do nothing um, on this kind of camera, of course, but if you had a camcorder, they would work. So, to set this up, go over here to the camera. We go to menu, communications, menu one, I usually stay on airplane mode. Um, move around so I'm not getting as many reflections here. Yeah, okay, hopefully that's better. 
maybe not. Anyway, um, okay. So I'm usually on airplane mode uh, just to save battery because I don't use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything like that most of the time. But we want to turn that off. Bluetooth is enabled. Um, okay, so then you go to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection. Looking for my phone, but we push the over button. Here's your remote. I've paired it before, so it should know. Um, yeah, and that should do it. If I click info, you've got a MAC address for it. Doesn't really do anything else, but that should do it. Now, the other trick, and what I always forget, and I wonder why the remote doesn't work. In order for it to work, you've got to be in the right drive mode. So I'm in single shot right now. Need to be in one of these remote. It's got a little picture of a remote by the timer. Um, so I'm going to go to the either one works the same really doesn't matter I'll go to the two second just because I might use that with the shutter button as well and then I'm good to go so here's my shot let's focus just a little bit there we go I'm at f8 1 30th of a second 1250 ISO I'm gonna drop that to 1 800 and go down or up a little on shutter speed instead because I'm pretty still here I'm not worried about movement other than camera shake so then I'll give the camera a minute to settle for any micro vibrations to die down push my button and that should have took a shot there we go I can chimp I can magnify looks pretty darn good I gotta say Canon's macro lenses are nice and sharp this might actually be a good subject for my other lens I brought, but I'll get to that. Okay, so there we go. So now I'm gonna take a few to do a focus stack, and I'll put those together in post, and we can compare. That'll be fun, <laughs> okay. So, the other lens that I mentioned is this one. It is a Laowa 25mm f2.8 ultra macro. Goes to 2.5 to 5x magnification. So it's basically a little microscope, actually. Um, another Chinese kind of knockoff. It is RF mount, uh, which is allowed because it doesn't have any electronics whatsoever. Fully manual lens. So you've got a, an aperture ring up here. And then your focus, sorry, I have to go off camera for this. Um, shoot, there. Um, it extends out to do the five to one. Now, the thing about this lens, <laughs> pretty much impossible to use handheld. Um, you've got to get so close. It doesn't let in much light, even at f2.8, and really you want to stop it down anyway to get uh, sharpness. So you need a tripod. To hold it steady and to get close enough um, yeah it's not tack sharp but I haven't really tried focus stacking it and that's really what the focus rail is for so I'm gonna do a little bit of that I think I'll give it a try take off the lens cap here show you the optics <laughs> so yeah literally basically a microscope um, you can see the aperture in there I'll stop that down so really you want to shoot this probably f8 or so maybe f16 and at the close distances that you're working on a lens like this even f2.8 isn't letting in a lot of light um, so definitely I think some extra light will be useful for this so I'll try maybe I'll try both the ring light and my little LED panel and some long exposures uh, and see how that goes okay so I'm at the 2.5x setting on this thing Here's what we're seeing. So as you can see, pretty good actually. Um, I'm at ISO 800 and a half a second, which is not ideal. Um, but if I go to magnified view, that's pretty darn good. Um, let you see, I'm pretty close to the actual target here. Uh, if I can zoom up, there we go. Um, so yeah, I'm only a few inches from the front of the lens. Um, and I've used my macro rail for focusing, obviously. So really, you have to. This lens has no focus, per se. It's just got the magnification, which sets it to a, a certain focal distance. So I imagine if I zoom in even more, I will have to um, 
get even closer to the subject. So start at 2.5. You can see here on the magnified view, I'm just kind of, I'm not touching the tripod. I'm, it's just my foot moving the leg a little bit <laughs> by stepping on the ground. So this is really where um, a remote, probably from a distance, and remote release uh, would come in handy. So I'll do a little bit of focus stacking here, I think. We'll give that a try. Um, yeah, there's the full view with the 2.5 magnification, and you can see the focus peaking going on there as well. Yeah, um, I'm going to use my extra light, though. I don't want to do a half second shutter speed. I'm going to try to get down to maybe a quarter of a second um, with some extra light thrown on from the LED panel. We'll see how that works. So, I'll shoot here a little bit, and I'll show you the best, as always. <laughs> That was fun. Now, I'm off to find some more targets. You can only spend so long on a berry. I'm seeing right along the trail here, some nice little flowers. We can zoom down. I'm not gonna give them the full treatment with the tripod and all, but I'll grab some handhelds because there's still a place for that. <laughs> so handheld macro. Another place where I'm finding FV mode comes in handy. So I've always tended to underexpose macro shots just because of the fact that you do lose light when you're working at close distances. Um, so yeah, I'm using FV. I've actually, I'm using FV with a little bit of exposure compensation dialed in because I don't want to overexpose either. Um, but yeah, for handheld, if you want to keep your shutter speed above, say, 100th um, to minimize shake, which is a good idea. It's pretty handy for that. Um, yeah. So I was using for those spider warts, um, 100, one one hundredth of a second shutter speed, F8, I believe, and then FV to dial in the ISO for me, which probably went pretty high, but as usual, not too worried about that because the uh, noise reduction tools we have these days are excellent. Ooh. Let me flip around. This is a nice little trail I've stumbled across. I've been to Belle Isle a few times in our time here in the Richmond area, uh, but I haven't explored it thoroughly, so this is nice. All right, see what else we can see. I'm hearing some birds. I do have my 100 to 500 in case I see anything good, uh, but that's not the primary purpose today. So I'm walking around with the 100 millimeter macro see what we see. I say that too much. All right, continue. <laughs> yeah, river is really running today. <laughs> Across the river there is uh, Hollywood Cemetery. Been a few times. Here, I have found some more Virginia spiderwort. It's actually a lot of it right in this vicinity. Uh, but there's some up on this little wall. And that makes a nice opportunity to get one from kind of a side on view. And that's the idea. So I want to get close in there. And I want to do some focus stacking. And you can see I'm close enough that I'm moving this foliage around the flower that I'm shooting which is going to cause some shake. So definitely going to want to use uh, my remote for this one. So let's take some shots and stack them up and see how it comes out. <laughs> Here we have the Belle Isle Quarry Pond, which is nice. And over here, all along the side of it, there's these big cliffs that people use for rock climbing and rappelling. 
and uh, I don't know. It's probably not for me. <laughs> Might be fun, but uh, yeah, I'm not that lucky. So, um, seen a few interesting things around, mostly some flowers, stuff you've seen already. Over at the far side of the pond, I'm seeing some birds, so I think I'll make my way over there and see if there's any birding to be had. Otherwise, just about ready to start heading out of here. So, let's get to it. Not a bad little excursion today. Not as many photos as usual, I don't think, because I did take more time to take some of them. Hopefully everything came out okay. Now, I would get lunch, but uh, doing lunch a little later. So I'll have to have a snack to tide me over. And a drink, definitely need a drink. All right, till next time. Be kind to yourself, take care of each other. Don't forget to be awesome. Get out and wander. <laughs> Later. Okay, I lied. <laughs> I had a few more minutes to spare, and I really like this spot. It's really nice in the fall, especially, but thought I'd give it a try today, too. So, just in case this shot came out pretty good, I will end on that instead. And now, I'm done. Okay, until next time.